I think of Los Angeles, I think of how there's this network of like hundreds of kids who do music, art, film, and we're all interconnected just naturally. Like we meet each other at parties, school, whatever. But then when you truly love your crowds and you truly love what you do, it extends to like worldwide. So like this kid Rex, he's from the UK, but we connected. Art will connect people worldwide. It's crazy. Baker Boys Distribution. Legal Civ is shipped all around the world from this address right here. This is all I see stuff. So I want to make clothes for normal kids so that they can afford, but that are also dope. And that have like a good meaning behind them. We put things like, you know, eat your fruit. This is the reinvent yourself shirt. It's about, you know, moving on, growing expanding. This is a shirt we did with Mac Miller, Illegal Civ Cinema Club. We made like two or three shirts that have references from movies. Because if you want to do something, you got to be a student of it. How are you supposed to break the rules if you don't know the rules? How are you supposed to think outside the box if you don't know what's in the box? It's a scene from Bronx Tale. That's my favorite movie ever, Robert De Niro, Chess Paul and Terry. So we have like a good message, first of all. That's the most important part. If you guys want anything, take it. Always, look, I have the promo for IC3, and people think we're not making any skate videos. <laughs> oh my. Thank you so much. Don't even trip, man. Yeah, good to see you too. Nice to meet you, man. For sure, for sure. It's been way too long for me to realize what truly has been there. Yo, Yo. we outside. All right, see you in a second. Steven. Yeah. It's just my dog. What up, Mikey? This dude right here is 18 now, but he was 17. Executive produced and wrote a lot, right? Yeah. Grammy nominated album, Not Playing. And where are we at right now? We're at Compton. This is my house. Uh, it's under construction right now, as you can see. But uh, I'm doing it up. Yeah, it's my crib. Oh, yeah, it's my little studio right here. I make my music on my phone. Uh, yeah, let's see, I play some shit on here. There's no excuses. If you can't get a laptop, there are apps you can use to get your ideas out. Just get them out. There's no excuses, kids. Explain how you first got into music. I was reading that you were supposed to go to a jazz school and you didn't want to go, but your mom forced you to go and that's where you met the person that got you into the internet, into the band. Yeah, it was actually like, it was a hood school. Like, it was just good for the jazz band. It wasn't like necessarily like a school for jazz. It was Washington Pro. All of my friends are going to Norbon, so like I'm like hot. Like no, I don't want to. I'm going all the way here. I go there, started playing bass in the band with like Jamil. And, like I fell in love with bass. I fell in love with jazz. Jamil, he used to like bring his laptop to school with his keyboard, and like I, I would like watch him make beats and like some fire. Like he has, he has some heaters. Like he let me like try a beat one day. He's like, yeah, just you know mess with it. You know, see what I'm saying, see what you can do. And I was like, all right. I made like a like a weak beat, like I didn't know what I was doing, it was garbage. But anywho, like, I guess he knew that like I could like make stuff. Um, he started inviting me to the studio that Sid and Matt had in Hollywood on Highland de Long Prix called Chateau Marie. That's when like, it just like clicked, like this is the sound like, that was ego death. You already knew that, you already knew that. 
Produce majority of the album without knowing I was making an album. I was just, you know, a kid in the studio making beats over this guy's drums. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just treating it as a hobby. You know, I didn't look at it as work. But um, after it, it dropped and, you know, I'm waking up for school, <laughs> like Monday morning. So I'll wake up and um, everybody's like, yo, congrats, congrats. I'm like, what like I didn't do nothing like what are you talking about and I see like we're on that list for best urban contemporary album I'm like what <laughs> like this is way too early like I was 17 at the time um it just it just it was just weird I still went to school that day and everything like you know what I'm saying just like yo you won't believe what happened <laughs> like <laughs> we're going to this so how do you feel about like listening to your parents because you didn't want to do it. Be, 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 because you did what your mom said, your life took a turn for the for the better. Yeah, as much as you want to know everything, a lot of times you end up finding out that like, your parents are always right. Like when you step out of your body and like look down, my mom is like always right. And it's like, <laughs> they're like, ah, 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 I'm always right. But you're like, yeah, you are. LA is a place where you can come in contact with gangsters and then you can also come in contact with people who live on a ranch mm -hmm. in the country. You can also come in contact with skateboarders mm -hmm. or people who play music. And that's why I wanted to include you in this LA thing because I feel like you represent that perfectly. Thank you. Yes, you're from Compton, but your music sounds nothing like the other Compton music that's popular right now. Yeah. It's important too that people know that you can be from somewhere like Compton. Exactly, it doesn't matter. Somewhere like anywhere, and you don't have to be a tough guy. Exactly. You don't have to get into that type of lifestyle. Exactly, I love that. We're about to go see Ryder McLaughlin. He can do these amazing illustrations. He has shirts that he makes, sweaters. He's great with like a spray can. He's just an amazing artist, period. And an amazing skateboarder.